I think for me, the camera is the way that I want to be able to control what the viewers see in front of them, rather than having, you know, life throw me whatever images that's coming by and then just make a quick snapshot of it. And a lot of my photographs, I think they not really necessarily come from reality, but they come from either a memory or from an idea. Therefore, they have to be stage in order for me to like retell those narratives. Usually I start with an idea before I make my images. Usually the idea has to do with the specificity of the location and of the subjects that I'm photographing. The next step it would be for me to locate the appropriate subjects. I would trying to find the appropriate backdrops for the subject, which is in the landscape, usually um, either in Vietnam or in the US. In many ways, I think the process that I work is very similar to painting. That is, I keep going back to the same situation and kind of like rework it until it feels right for me. That is composition, content, lighting. And I can tell you, you know, some images of mine take, sometimes takes like three years to make. From the initial part, which is the research until it's finished. Photography is at one of its most really exciting times. We have the changing of the medium. We have a renaissance in the types of creative work is being done in the field. I feel extremely fortunate to be one of the members of this particular time. Anybody can operate and make images. Everybody with a cell phone can make an image to see the evolution, the democratic nature of photography is actually being fulfilled. Teaching at Oberlin College has been, you know, it's, it's nice because we were all the, one of the few programs in the country left where, you know, the hybrid of contemporary medium and historical medium can be bridged. We have been seeing this wooded thing for so long. Mm -hmm. yeah. It would be nice to see just like cattails or maybe like, you know, the range. Like I think I teach by showing examples. I teach by showing my own failures and other artists' failures as well. And I teach students in many ways to keep working until they get that first beautiful image so that they know what they can actually achieve so that they can go back and repeat it. Imagine that there are just like literally, you know, there are more photographs than bricks in the world. I mean, that's the truth. Your task really is to make the most beautiful. And what I say, when I say beautiful, I'm talking about the central, the composition, the texture, the arrangement, the color. But then that's not where I think beauty is wholly lies in, but like I think about what kind of ideas that you're trying exactly. to get across. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I think I use this example, you know, when you go out on a date, you when you're attracted to somebody, that's the beginning. But then if you have conversation with that person, he or she's also very intelligent. I think the potential for a relationship would be at its maximum at that point, you know? The photograph has to be first, physically beautiful, and second, intellectually engaging.